All right, welcome to episode 13 of the Crom Updates. I am joined today with Jake Jacobs, who is my other half in the world of making Turbo Pit Fighter. Uh, Jake and I are making a uh, comic book, an indie comic book, about a post-apocalyptic romance comic. But we're doing it side by side. He does the pencils and I do the inks and we talk comics and uh, we keep ourselves motivated every Sunday. Um, but I have brought him on once again to give me some art direction, some good feedback as I've always trusted from him on my second of four stories that will be in the um, revised edition of Crom the Barbarian. Um, I've read this was published in 2008. Now I'm going to be doing a uh, revised edition with this new inking style I have. Jake, I just want to thank you for taking the time to jump on with me and review my work. How are you doing? Good. I uh, just uh, fought my printer for about 20 minutes, but I got this <laughs> printed out. Um, I'm on the dark side here, so I'm like I'm like Darth Vader, but um, actually the the pages the pages are quite dark. I mean, I can hold mine up here. Yeah, you know, watching things on video. Now I have mine on a on a cream color paper. You have a stark white paper just from the copier, um, but you can also see the original for that first page, and it is it's dark. Um, one of the things I took on myself and still am is really overdoing the darks to then work in with a uh, my one of my favorite tools the artisto extra fine tip white paint markers so yeah um so yeah, i know you're going to be giving me a lot of like hey i don't know what the hell's going on here <laughs> um but if you if you do let me ask a question the shadow underneath uh, Krom getting mobbed. Can you still see my um, brush strokes underneath him? Like there should be a ga a grass pattern underneath. Yeah. Can you well, see I it? See, I see, okay. There, there's like a plant, and then there's some grass here on the right. Yeah. 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 So and that's also, one of the things I've been doing is building these dark areas up instead of just taking a big old black brush full of ink or marker and just filling it in i'm literally doing even like larger let's say cross hatching uh forms uh to in, in order to build areas into the dark so that that that's something that is a uh, objective of mine right all right well um if you want if you want me to just you know start giving my impressions hell yeah let's go let's go all right um so I think we spoke about this in the last one, but um, I I would like to see some uh, some more airspace around the text. I think it might be a little imposing when you're asking someone to read something and it's so close to the edge here. I mean, you could read it, but you know, just as far as ease of reading and oh being yeah, okay, gentle on the eye. Um, submitting, I, you know, we spoke about this um, typewriter font. You know, it's kind of cool because it's retro, but you know, if you're if you're talking about younger readers, you know, sometimes they see that and they're like, "Oh, when was this printed?" You know, <laughs> so <laughs> there's pros and cons. Um, you know, the uh, the title here, submitting to the Amazons. My um, my just first sense is that you know it could be higher, and then you could have some tree branches. You know, that kind of like bring you in or maybe just leave it where it is and kick it over an inch but i don't know if this stuff is movable if the art is flat it's all if the art's all flat that is, um that is. you know i'm talking i'm talking about you know digital wizardry here sometimes sometimes I, <laughs> like i would take the clone tool in photoshop and start cloning it over here and then fill in like some space here but these are you know these are just the things yeah maybe up here you want a tree branch or a cloud or something um so yeah, like, you know, separating all the, uh, I mean, you know, putting a little bit of airspace around the text doesn't just mean like hard white. It could also be gradiated into the background. Um, so yeah, we, we spoke also about when the faces are small, um, you know, 
going in there real fine and chiseling out, you know, like a decent expression. I think I think it's really important. I'm going to be doing that on uh, that artwork that uh, JP Torres sent me. I'm going to go back in and the faces, and I'm just going to rework the faces. I think faces are so important that, I mean, that's what, uh, you know, the great Jack Kirby once had his faces reworked by John Romita for, uh, you know, particularly on females because Stan Lee thought yeah. that John Romita yeah. was doing better female faces in the romance comics. Um, I'm on page two now, right? All right. Yeah. That's this one here. Yeah. So this, I'm, I'm not sure what's going on here. This is like a portal. Yes. It's a, yeah, it, it's a it definitely something I wanted to play with the idea of that, you know, um, you're going into a world and this is the world here. So then that shape, you know, kind of double plays itself. This is the modern world with buildings. No, that's, that's their, that's their world. These are ancient buildings. Yeah. Some pretty tall ones. Right. There are maybe skyscape should... scraping builders. Yeah. Maybe you should have Amazon like some, <laughs> some spires or something on there. I don't know. I just made it like Islamic, but maybe you should have some kind of decorative architecture there that shows that it's ancient because this looked, I, when I saw that, I thought that was modern buildings. Okay. Um, yeah, the the rest all looks kind of cool here. Yeah, just watch those faces. I, you know, I think it's worth all the time, you know, to go in and just get the faces really good close up. Um, same thing here. This is cool. Um, yeah, I like the flow here. You got the hand pulling this back. Um, this this profile face, I would either go in and put the details or else you know, shade it back so that it's just edge lit, you know, but if you're not, if you're gonna leave it blank like that, you know, that looks just like it's unfinished. Um, integrating here, right? Noth none of the hatching or shading really pops out as like naked, you know, it's so that's when things flow together. Um, we got the, uh, this creature coming in here. And he's protecting her, pulls out his uh, sword, and he gets the uh, creature in a headlock. He's swinging back. Who's this character? He's coming out of nowhere and throwing this uh, hammer. Yeah, that's from up here. You can see her. She's got a hammer down here. <clears throat> yeah, so we, I think we spoke about this last time, but what if there was a device that just separated it so that nobody accidentally thinks that these are two guys in the same scene? Right. You, you kind of do right. it here, but if you just took this white and just outlined it here, you know, may, maybe just here is all you need. Like, you know, just add the white outline there. That just makes it look more like a montage. You know, because his arm is kind of fading out here. Right. You know, and and uh, maybe around the plant too. You know, that like this is is this tall grass? So then, like you know, use your use your white stick over here too. Okay. Right. So that that kind of just like cuts it, you know, left and right. Just that one little gap of space there, I think, would help. But as the my mighty barbarian raised from the body of slain Kra. Now you have this uh, hammer blow here, but you don't have a sound effect and you don't have any like uh, impact lines. So how about some impact lines? Like, you know, I would even like make, I would make the impact lines in white over here like this, but then over here, you know, maybe he's got like some spittle coming out or something you know, that just gives the direction of the impact so that, you know, the hit is felt. What's the sound effect? noise well if you put a sound effect i don't know where you would put that you know you, you i might put it right in here i think right here yeah i mean it looks like you know it looks like uh malunk m-l-u-n-k <laughs> m m l u n k <laughs> that's awesome i don't know that's what i would do nice. but um <laughs> Okay. 
Uh, yeah, but you know, we did this in Turbo, uh, where like, there, you know, there's some impact lines here, you go over the white, and then you go over the black, and you go over like, boom! I mean, he's taking a big hammer blow right there. Um, yeah, knocks him I'm, cold! I'm assuming this is the next page, right? Dazed yep. but unconquered, Krom whirls to do battle with those who attacked him. Women, women warriors? All right. Yes, is that so surprising, Kurt? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I would, I would, uh, I would put a little lightning bolt down here too, you know. And uh, separate, you would just have to go around this wrist and this, you know, this contour here, because otherwise it looks like she's in the front of these guys. She's getting ahead of herself. Women, yes, but not soft pampered women. We are Amazons, brought to you by Jeff yeah. Bezos. <laughs> um, this these uh this brush back here looks like it could be a little more um refined. It looks like brush strokes. You should try to make it look more like flora, fauna, whichever one, flora. Yeah, um, you know, like putting a couple little branches and leaves or something. And, uh, you know, back here, you know, go back in a second time. You got some kind of like a doodly, you know, shapes here that could use maybe like a little stippling or pointillism just to make it look not so cartoony. Ropes and spears forced Crom to submit. So these women are, have this helmet on. Have you thought about like having ponytails sticking out the back? At this point, it's so much. Uh, uh, it's adding so much more to the. I think already All right. the density. Yeah, the density. I mean, it's great suggestion. Great suggestion, but uh, yeah, because maybe they don't. You know, maybe they're just you know kind of like androgynous. Maybe like a, a maybe like a unicorn horn on the front of their <laughs> something like well, that. I might. Yeah, I, I might unique. actually do that for the. I might actually do that for the leader at least. Her, a fin. her helmet have it, yeah, like a just a unicorn horn type of thing. Mm -hmm. Great suggestion. Forced Krom to submit. Be gone, girl. Irana shall have Krom as her mate. Meanwhile, a backhand blow sends Lala flying. Oh, you oh. know what I thought? I thought this was Krom at first. Um because you just got the flowing hair, so you, it's good that you have the description there. The bop is a little vertical. You can't tilt the bop. Like, uh, you have it in, like, this little impact uh, shape. But yeah. it looks like it's, it kind of looks like an afterthought there. Like, I'd like to see some speed lines oh, it here. Is. And then some impact lines. Again, you know, you got the white up here, black on white, and then down here, white on black. You know, just some little radial lines. And then, uh, you know, if you keep the bop that it like it is, it's cool, but it kind of makes your head tilt sideways. Um, I also noticed this here. You have kind of like a... Is this on, on my printout only? You have like a dark line here that's like more shaded. Let me look at the PDF. No, it is. It is. It's. It, I mean, it's. It's me. I have yet to kind of blend because you know when you print this out, it has that. There's a dead. There's a dead space that they. You know, border that they print on it, and so then I start adding to expand it. Now, when I do officially get this work scanned in high res, and then I'm formatting for the book, this will be my bleed and cut area. So I can. I have that much space to cut into yeah so i'm not going to be i'm not my bleed edge won't be here it'll actually be like about a quarter inch in on the main but here it's going to be like oh maybe that's even a quarter inch there so i've i have yet to even like because i have been gradating you know the um uh, you know that that gutter there you know. Yeah, well, that I mean, it, it's just noticeable. So that explains how it got there. But now, uh, what I would do it to compensate, you know, I would I would maybe like thicken up some of these black lines here, so it doesn't, right. uh, you know, seem so uh, 
so obvious, so conspicuous. Um, here you got the Amazons taking the long trek homeward um, with Krom slung on a pole like some captured animal. Is this text coming from the original uh, Gardner? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, your pages are so packed in and everything kind of like flows into each other, then 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 why is all this so empty here? Maybe you want some some clouds. I some like mists. the break. I mean I could pencil line some light crowds going in. You but could still have if a you break, look I here. Mean, um, yeah, but if where? you look at here, I, I masked out I masked out all the figures and this foreground and then the top part and then I, I spray painted it with white. And so there's this nice, like, like the sun is just saturating them right now on, on this. Yeah, I got that. that moving across. I got that. I just think, um, you know, it's a it's a lot of uh, of empty air, which breaks from the style that you've had from page to page to page. Like maybe just some misty mountains back here, you know, that add to the mountain range, you know, here and here that just frames it at least. Um, I don't know, but uh, wispy clouds. I don't know, I just, you know, I just see these big areas here. Um, defeated by women, the forest laughs at Krom. And uh, here I see your little butterfly. This is getting into some primitive art here, right? Getting into some Picasso. Um, days later in the great palace of Iran, an Amazon queen, Krom would learn, would, uh, you got a typo here, would learn his fate. Uh would learn his fate. No man of the forest that uh, I is there a comma here? No comma man of the forest that you have been selected tomato, tomato, tomate. You need a space here. It looks like Ooh, you have been selected. You're the selected oh, yeah. tomato. Um, <laughs> I'll kick that over. Um, you know, I would integrate this. Uh, integrate this text with the background a little fade you know fade it out you could probably do that easy enough on photoshop just by um you know drawing a little um of a uh, quick mask mode and then uh kicking back this the um brightness what about what about if this was flipped to uh white on uh dark gray text you could try it. I mean, the my my thing is like the uh, the the contrast is is kind of harsh. You know, it just kind of eases the eye, especially if the um you know the white background is so close to the beginning of the text. You know, uh -huh. another another possibility would be to select all the text and then just make it like ninety percent of what it is or ninety two percent of what it is. You know. And uh -huh. then, uh, and just, and that'll buy you the space that way. Okay. Um, cause I think it, I think it's a big size. It reads well, you could probably, uh, you know, afford it to come down a tiny little bit. Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, the faces, you know, is this face expressive enough? Um, here you got, you know, this, this harsh glow, I would deharshify. Um, you know, this is the shiny line. This is supposed to be like the torch light or something. So maybe you don't need it to be so, uh, you know, abrupt, you know, I'm just, as I'm doing it, I'm just like integrating stuff in, I'm putting in like some in between marks here. You got the alternate angle, but there's no dialogue here. Right. In that right. case, we will let the arena choose your fate. You know, it seems like, um, there should be like a I little narration that. here. At that moment, Crumb paused, you know, to think or something. Hmm. Uh, you know, it just, it just, it's just kind of a, a, a weird break to the rhythm. Um, you might want to have a, um, not a full white, but a partial white uh, translucent outline to, to cut around the leopard and the lady because uh, you're missing that. These these hatching lines go over the line of her arm. That that bugs me. Um, meanwhile, those women took Krom from me. Well, they won't get away with it. So now she's making her way through the forest, but she's shadowy. 
by forest trail and waterfall, Lala comes at last to the city of the Amazons. And uh, here, uh, right, so here I would separate with the little white, uh, you know, lightning or the light framing, white framing. Here I am assuming that Krom is facing off with a fighter in a uh, in an arena or something. Yep. Right, and you do not do divert from the text by adding your own narration panels. Like I have not, but I guess maybe we could put another one in here. Yeah, if you were going to do it here, then you might want to do it here because the silence is a little, you know, it it breaks the rhythm of how you usually have like a caption with every panel, but um also I would just I would just make, you know, certain that if people understand what's going on here, um, let me see what the next thing says. Next day, Krom takes his place on the sands of the arena. Well, you're gonna, you're not gonna like this, but how about if you move this over here? It's not crazy. It's not crazy at all. Next day, Krom takes his place on the sands of the arena. You could just, you could do dot 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 there, and then come back here to. You know, dot 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 to do combat with Marla, champion like warrior that. of all the Amazons. Wait, that's a chick. Yep. Ooh. Yeah, maybe Marla. <laughs> Marla might need some like lipstick or some uh, eyelashes or something. Um, I've completely missed that. Um. Champion warrior of all the Amazons. Smash. Yeah, this is cool here. Right, you have these like little dazed little dots. That's nice. Uh, this lady is looking long. This lady's looking on over here like, oh no. <laughs> <laughs> um, with spins and clever holes, Marla treated the barbarian as though he were a child. What's the matter with me? This can't be happening. Um, yeah. Yeah. Some hours later in the royal bedchamber, which held Krom captive. All right, now there's a, there's a text block here I can't even read. Where? Oh, yeah, I'm sorry. You did not get the uh, white, this white text that goes over the top. You are not as strong as you thought, but still, you will make uh, Irana a good mate. Yeah, I could see it on the PDF. Well, that's, if that's going to be white text, now, how come you have like a, at least three quarters of an inch over here? How come you put it like impinging on the artwork rather than like kicked over? Was that like. Well, once again, my bleed, my bleed is like right here. So that's oh, my okay. trim line right there. So that's that. I mean, I've got another less than quarter right there. So, so you, you were expanding the artwork. Yeah, I notice here you yeah. have this yep. Yep. line. I, yep. I didn't notice at first yet. So you have this line yep. where, where some of this hatching just ends. It looks like you have to go back and uh, yes. extend. Yes. Right? Yep, I do. Yep. Yeah, I would also maybe like, uh, you know, try to try to blur that or try to um eq this uh you know that that straight vertical line out of there because that looks like it's not from the era <laughs> of chrome <laughs> that looks like that's from the era of printing um right 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 so uh so that that explains why some hours later in the royal bedchamber which held chrome captive sigh you are sad, Crown the Barbarian. Can can it be that you think of Lala? Uh, would you like to? Would you like me to uh, put on her perfume? Um. Yeah. If this is his eyeball, I might. Uh, I might put an, an extra little line. Like, see how I just did that. I'll show you clothes. I just added like a little extra line to his eyeball, like uh, on the side of his eyeball. Okay. Make it look more like a. Okay. Um, okay. Lala? Yes, Crom, Lala. I followed you through the forest. Oh, it's her. Yeah. She's, <laughs> she's swiping off her mask. 
Um, do you need like a little um, directional lines there in white? Like, I mean, this, it's kind of right in front of his chest, so maybe not, but um, you need a white separation line here with the, sh with the shield. Yeah, so these things like kind of melt into each other, but I would make the separation line go around the guy's shield, but behind her goat mask. And when I say the guy's shield, I mean the girl's shield, I guess. Right. Right. Um, stealing the dress of an Amazon as I entered the city. I found the food they fed you before you fought with Marla. Drugged. No wonder that she elephant was able to hurl Crom around. Right? Um, I would I would uh, use my partial translucent gray outliner and go around the cup and the arm a little here. You could miss that there's a cup there. Right. And this this empty doorway right here, is that what's going on? Yeah. Yeah. Uh I I would maybe like put in some like faded gray, some pantry items or something, right? This is where the food stores are. Oh wow. Maybe there's yeah. some urns and some jars and stuff back here and that could blend into this hatching right make it look a little more kitcheny yeah later i stole up behind one of the priestesses who were preparing you for your wedding night and yeah this is dying for a thud or a thunk um in white right here above it with some impact lines Right, she's she's jacking her in the back of the head with this uh, with the stick. Yep. Uh, white separator line, right, going down the middle here, and uh, right. See this? It's interesting. You have this little uh, seat thing, but is, does that belong on the left or the right? I guess it belongs on the right. It it and and to be honest with you, it is compositionally there for that reason. It's it's to blur time and space to move from one to the other. So yes, it could be here and it could be here. So we can play a double role, but you know, there's nothing saying I can't create a harder white edge to help this be more uh, separated. Yeah, but, but it doesn't have to be a, a, a pure white edge. It could just be a translucent white edge. So you split the difference, you, you know. Okay. Come Lala, we, we leave now. Um. Yeah, here you have uh, small faces, so you're purposely leaving out the detail. Yep. Sorry, women, we'll be on our way. Bop. So you get a bop here, but you don't have a bop there. Ooh, get another bop. Um, bop, bop. Yeah, well, maybe you want that one to be a bim, so you have a bim and a bop. A bim and a bop. I think that's a song somewhere. Who put the bim <laughs> in the bop? The bop. So, uh... <laughs> I'm not sorry. Take that, you man stealer. <laughs> um, Krom, we're safely out of the city, but Irana is sending her women warriors after us. Let her send them. I have a trick or two to show these to show those vixens. Um, so this little um cotillion of Amazon warriors, they all look like they're standing really stiff and upright. You don't really get the sense that they're hurtling towards them. Maybe you want to have like a foot sticking up or something like, you know, somebody's making a move and then like maybe some people in the back here that kind of like, you know, somebody has like an arm raised, like, let's, you know, like they're moving, you know, it's got to be some hustle and bustle. <laughs> They're, uh, you know, their their spears are pointed straight up. They should be pointed towards the the prey. Um, this looks like my friend Rebecca. All right, so yeah, and anytime you have like naked shading, I would integrate it in. Okay, we're getting towards the end here. Smash. Oh wait, this is the other page. Did that already? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay, this is the last page. Yeah, you got it right there. Yep, 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 yep. Through the waterfall and beyond, Crom led up the way. All right, so I see you got the uh, the trim issue with that darkness. Yeah, you could definitely yeah. fix that. You know, bring in some gray and just gradiate, gradiate it. Um, 
you know, this looks like it's asking for something here, like, you know, maybe some branches or some ivy or like the the sun or something, setting sun or whatever, whatever time of day it is. You know, I you know, usually like leafy branches are are a good bet. You know, through the waterfall and beyond, Crom led the way up precipitous mountain slopes. Why stop to cut a tree? Here you need the white separator, I would say. What, or black separator. You have black separator down here, so you could just extend that up. That's that's okay too. Why cut a tree branch? Because this tree is going to save us. Um is this next or this one next? This one is slightly above, but this one's to the left. Stumbling, falling? No, it's it's over here. High yeah. into the mountaintops goes first. Yeah, this this yep, high to the mountains, yep. Should that be a capital H? Well, it's pulling off of uh yeah, yeah, it should be a capital H, yes. You're right. Right. Um, you know, it does get a little confusing anytime this word balloon is right. higher than this one. So maybe you right. wanna like have some clouds here that point into this and just kind of lead the eye. No, come over here. Okay. And then capital H, high into the mountain peaks that form the top of the world, go Krom and Lala. Here on the, uh, you got a capital O here. This would be a little O. Here on the snowy stretches below that glitter with reflected sunlight, they were followed. Mm -hmm. Right, so this is just kind of like an expanse. Stumbling, falling, and slipping, the Amazon maids pursue from the rocks above. Um, maybe maybe this from the rocks above, you could move like a little more to here, you know, to just kind of like, just take this diagonal movement. You have a nice diagonal movement this way and this way that points okay. down. And then I think if you, if you could move this line of text, it's a little too close to this one or, or maybe, yeah, maybe you could distribute these. So this one is from the rocks above and then the, here, what's happening to them here. And then this could just be more of a gap. They're nice. snow blind. Like the sun on this white snow and ice reflects the sun as we travel along the mountain ridge. The sun on this white snow and ice reflects the sun. Did did he write that? So it'd be light. Uh, I mean, I did make some edit edit edit, edit editorial change. So I, I would say like reflect remember. reflects brightly, or uh, reflects or the or or say that. the light. The sun on this white snow and ice reflects the light, or the light on this white snow and ice reflects the sun. Makes more sense. Right. Dash right. dash. As we travel along the mountain ridge, they'll stagger around without direction, and we'll return to our forest. Yeah. Um. So if they're not, if they're looking down at these guys that are that are blinded by the snow, by the light of the snow. Um. Maybe there should be a little more reflection of light on them. They look like they're pretty shadowy <laughs> right there. Right. Are they facing down towards the light? Right. So it should be like bright, uh, maybe like bright reflections down here and down here Ooh. and like more on their legs and less on their tops, you know, maybe just like some right. edges. Back in the world of the Amazons, I will find Krom again, and when I do, he shall be mine. Yeah, so, you know, uh, back in the world of the Amazons, what's her name? Irana? Irana raged, I will find Krom again, and when I do, he shall be mine. I don't know if that's so easy to fit yeah. in, but I, it looks well, like I can, I can always cut it. You know, retype it out, print it, and cut it, and put it back on there. Is this the end of a chapter? Yeah, these are four. The, this is number two. These are all. These are four separate little uh, little ditties. So this is the. Right. So how do you indicate that this is the end of the chapter? Do you you need like a little like a like a little scroll in the bottom or something? Ah. <laughs> uh... 
Same Finn. Yeah. Finny. The Italian, right? Finny. <laughs> <laughs> um and you have and you you have some room here that that's uh looks a little empty i would take the smoke and i would divert it into two branches okay so you you just you know bring some of this directionally off to the right and then maybe you don't need anything else this black shape down by the uh to the right of the leopard it looks like a hand a black hand pointing at the leopard on the where on the pdf where? It's like a thumb and a finger. Where? Point to it. Right here. This looks like a hand right here. So maybe you want to integrate that. Oh wow! I did not see that. Yeah, I can. Yeah, I can definitely shade that down a bit more. Because yeah, it can just be total black over there. Just shading it down. Subconsciously put there. <laughs> you know what else I'm thinking um, maybe you have that sun glare effect on the uh, on these women here maybe uh, maybe it pays to have like another woman here with her like her hand up like she's in distress, but she's hardly even visible because she's like fading away in the in the light, you know. Ooh. You know, maybe she's like on her knees, like, and uh, and her hands up, like, and but but she's like only like ten percent or twenty percent gray, you know, disappearing. Might that might like accentuate the storytelling a little bit. And then, yeah, you know, just in general, you know, on every page, on every panel, you know, I'm kind of anal, but, you know, I usually go in and do another pass of uh, white on white on the gray, gray on the white, you know, oh, absolutely. and, absolutely. and uh, just refine things. You have some areas yep. where, you know, you you took the time to, to make it very detailed and you have some areas where, you know, it looks like it's doing the, the quick version. So. If you want to make that a little right. more uniform before you go to print, as much time as you have is always good, as long as you don't overdo. You know, but but you could always you know pick in you could always pick those areas out like wherever there's, you know wherever there's like harsh uh, tones here. You know you could always go feather that back in. You could always add more edge lighting, like some gray edge lighting. You know not. Not a hundred percent white or black. I love the translation. Yeah, I'm really playing around with these. I'm I'm really spending I'm spending good time on it. And I'm like, I I have to say, you solved. I didn't even bring it up, and I I, I didn't know if you were going to uh, uh, bring it up. But um, this panel has been the bane of my existence forever, and I would never in a million years, Jake, ever thought to cut this out this text to bring it over here to help establish the shot to here to basically have less text to create more of a focus yeah. on just fighting and i i i, I it once again it, it's it's one of the one of the things that makes me absolutely um excited and and happy to be working with you because you have such a sequential mind i can't put it any other way yeah i would i would just take half of that text and move it over because otherwise you don't have yep. any text for this side yeah yep 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 no I, <laughs> that 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 because i was gonna i was gonna go through this with you and then i was gonna state this 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 panel's killing me do you have any suggestions <laughs> but once again once again you just did it based on the sequential effort that needs to happen a story. See, I don't have a sequential mind. I will, I will be totally uh, uh, upfront with everybody. I love comic books for many reasons, but the way I, as a creative person, use comic books is almost like a sketchbook in a sense. So I have larger ideas, and I want to see them worked out, you know, with my effects and, and inking and, and so on and so forth. So. I, I do get lost when it gets down to, especially me putting in my own 
uh, you know, sequentialness to it. So yeah, I well, just have is, to thank you your, uh, for jumping this is your on. your art from, uh, this is an example of your artwork from pencils to ink to tones to lettering to everything, right? And yeah. your style yep, is yep. evident there. You know, you definitely went in with a, uh, you know, a concerted effort, you know, or a concerted uh, plan to pack things in, make it dense, have things melting into each other, you know, that definitely comes across, you know, um, but, you know, once you do that, you know, the, the placement, the lettering, I think people need to like, take more time with typography and the placement of the lettering and the, I agree. you know, the, the I agree. proofreading, I agree. the turning, this, all of it, it's just like, you know, I mean, with Photoshop, you I'm, can I, I, with I'm, Photoshop you can you can take like a letter, like a text block and you can foreshorten it or you could uh, you know you could blur it or bend it or you know or or wave it or twirl it you know so uh, there, there's a lot right. you can do if you just make your lettering a, a layer you know right. All right, well, that's what we have, and I appreciate you stepping on. I'm going to be asking you to do this at least two more times, and of course, when we have, when I have the whole book together, we'll have a really nice sit down and look at that compositional feat of uh, you know putting a book together and everything. So I don't have anything else, Jake. We'll let these people get back to uh, reading comics, uh, drawing them if they do. Uh, any other words of wisdom before we uh, jet out? Nope. See you guys next week.